and, and my message today is, okay, this, you know, 21 days, is why we fast. All right? You'll be like, oh, I wanted something, Pastor, like to, for 2017. This is for 2017, going into 2018. This will help you. This will bless you. I'm telling you, if you just, if you take those 21 days in the very front of your year and you give those to God, it's just like your tithe. Like I said, God always likes the best and he likes the first. If you would take that, that 21 days and say, Lord, I'm going to consecrate myself for these 21 days. I'm going to give myself over to you and to your will. I want to hear your voice. I want to seek your face. So today, I'm going to just go through some of these things of, of why we fast as believers, okay? I don't know about you, but one of the reasons why I fast is because I desire change. Amen? I desire change. How many of you desire change for 2018? Amen? Well, we got about 50%. The other 50 say, I'm good. I'll just go right into 2017. What I had, I'm good. 2018, what I had in 2017, bless the Lord. I'm good, Pastor. I'm good. Don't, don't tell the Lord to touch none of my life. I'm good. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, church, change will happen if you apply fasting to your life. I desire to fast because I want to hear his voice more clearly. I want to see him more clearly. I want you to know what fasting is not. Fasting is not a way to manipulate God to, to get what you want. Fasting is not, a, a, when you fast, you, you're not allowed to just demand things from God. That, that's not what fasting is. Well, fa Lord, I fasted, you, you got to do this. No, no. Fasting is an invitation. You're invited to humble yourself and get closer to God. It's an invitation. You do it voluntarily. You're not forced. We're not, we're, this, we're not forcing you to fast. Neither is God forcing you to fast. It is a voluntary action that we do as believers as we want to draw closer to the Lord. I mean, some, some of us have been trying to get rid of things for years, and we just can't do it. I'm telling you today, if you pray and you fast, those things will leave you. Fasting is a discipline. Fasting is a discipline. Fasting, when, when not anybody can fast. Some people are too enslaved by food. Come on, somebody, look at me. Look, he's looking at me. I'm not going to look at nobody. He looked right at me when he said that. I know he was talking to me. Let me tell you something. Y'all think drugs is bad. Food, there's a restaurant on every corner. <laughs> Some people say, I can't fast. I'm going to get sick. How many people died of fasting? How many people died of eating too much? <laughs> if you don't think eating is bad, the fall of humanity began with a bite. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it began with a bite. All right? I'm telling you what. You know, it, it, we have to look at the Word of God and take it for what it says. I mean, there's a reason. The word fasting, it means without food, that you don't take in any food. Now, I'm glad some people are fasting social media. They're fasting electronics. They're fasting all that. That's great. I think it's, it's good to do that. But that's not biblical fasting. Biblical fasting is going without food for a period of time for you to consecrate, set apart, and sanctify yourself unto the Lord. That's true fasting. Now, if you're fasting, I would highly encourage you to minimize all that other stuff. Now, matter of fact, the, the more that you fast, the less you should even want to see TV. Because you don't just fast to lose weight or for a diet. When you fast, you pray. Prayer and fasting go together. I love the way Marilyn Hickey said, she said, and, prayer and fasting are the two power twins. They go with each other. All right? That's like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Come on, they go together. All right? And, and I'm telling you, I mean, you know, I'm just telling you that when you begin to really fast and pray and believe God, and, and you know, and, and I'm just, look, I'm just going to be real with you. If you, if you want to lose weight, just, just do 
Slim Fast or Jenny Craig. It's a lot easier than fasting. All right? But if you really want to fast the way God wants you to fast, then every time you go without a meal, you pray. Maybe you're fasting for lunch and you're working. Well, during your lunch hour, talk to God. Just glorify Him. Lord, show me these things. And so I, I want everybody to hear, I want everybody here to know that God doesn't force you. Look, if you don't fast, if you never fast in your life, you'll still go to heaven. Okay? You, you know, not fasting doesn't keep you out of heaven. But if you want to experience God in his fullness here on the earth, if you want to know God's direction for your life, if you don't want to have to always making the wrong decision, going down the wrong paths, making the same mistakes, stay addicted to these things, there and there. Uh, keep walking around with unforgiveness. If you want to break away from those things, if you want something different, if you want change in your life, I encourage you. Fast. All right? Every year, many of you know, 2000, uh, if y'all have been here, uh, 2018, 2017, since we began the church, I think after the first year, we've always done a 21-day fast. And I can say with great joy, with great joy, that when we began it, man, it was hard to get it to stick. <laughs> you know? You know, it, it was hard. But when I talk to people today, here, everybody's in anticipation. Everybody's already. I, I, I talk to people, they're like, I'm setting things aside. I'm, I'm choosing what fast I'm going to do. It brings so much joy. There's so much unity when we fast together corporately as a body. Amen? And so... I know it's not a popular subject. I know that there's not a lot of churches talking about fasting. But I, I'm telling you, this has been happening since thousands of years back. Way back, 4,000 years ago in the Old Testament, uh, they were fasting. They were fasting. They were consecrating themselves. The Bible calls it, when, when the Lord told the children of Israel, He says, I want you to flick your souls, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Afflict those, uh, deny those, and seek my face. Amen? I'm telling you today, your breakthrough, if you listen to what, to what we say today, there's a breakthrough. Can we turn that heater off, man? It's a, good Lord, I'm, I'm burning up. That's the fire of the Lord. So, this is the title of my message today. I'm going to just go through some steps today. And I'm going to just share with you some of the reasons why we fast. There's a lot more, but I didn't have time to put all of them in there. So, uh, number one, we fast because Jesus assumed that we would fast. All right? Mark chapter 2, they were telling the Lord, uh, the, 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 the Pharisees, they said, look, uh, um, John's disciples always fast. How come your disciples don't fast? And Jesus said, I'm here so they won't fast. But when I leave, they're going to fast. All right? He also said this in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. He says, when you fast, when you fast. He, said, no, he, not, he did not say if you fast. When you fast. Right? Do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you. That, you, that they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, again, he assumed that we would fast. Right? Mechanics work on cars. Christians pray and fast. Right? All right? Pilots drive airplanes. Christians pray and fast. It's a part of our DNA as believers. If you're a Christian and you've never fasted, you haven't tapped into all that God has for you. It says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. Well, everybody here is going to be fasting, so we know that, right? Are you fasting? You know, I'm, we're, we're all fasting, amen? Don't invite me to your fellowship and you got three slabs of ribs and, and some sausage and talking about, I didn't know you was fasting. I didn't know you were fasting. You sure? You don't want that? Don't, don't, don't. The Bible says don't be a stumbling block for your brother, all right? Don't be a stumbling block. Don't come, come visit me with barbecue 
sauce all over your mouth. You got a napkin? I'm going to have to get religious on you. I'm consecrating myself to the Lord. No, but seriously, don't be a stumbling block, all right? You know, seek the Lord on what you, what he would have you fast, all right? Everybody, everybody can fast differently, you know? You can fast a meal. You can fast during the week. You know, some, some great men and women of God that, 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 that I hear, I mean, Marilyn Hick, she's a great woman of God. And fasting for her is a, is a lifestyle. She fasts like six meals a week. You know, so that may be, you know, one meal a day or stuff, you know, but it's a lifestyle. You know, Derek Prince used to fast often. You know, he said he calculated all the times he fasted. He think, I don't remember how old he was, but he said, I fasted a total of eight years of my life because he would just, it's the constant, you know, and I'm going to tell you this, and this is just a, just a, a side benefit, but when you fast, man, it gives you better health. Fasting is more... Well, it was just as common as eating back then. People fasted for their, you know, and I was showing Pastora this little video that I saw, and I think it's, it's awesome. But, you know, when, when we never give our digestive system a time to rest, you know, our, our bodies have a, a thing for body fat, all right? And it's, it's reserved there for when we don't eat. It taps into that reserve, to that body fat. But when we eat every year, every year, that body fat just keeps accumulating, keeps accumulating, keeps accumulating, and we never, our body never gets to tap into it. Yeah, get, yeah, give your body some time to tap in, amen? You got some surplus there. Come on, somebody. There's a little surplus there you can tap into, you know? But it, it does. It helps you, cleans out your arteries and all that. That's just a side benefit. But we don't do it for those reasons. We do it for spiritual reasons, amen? So Jesus says... When you fast, he assumed we fast. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights when he went into the wilderness, right? He was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he went into the wilderness. So if Jesus fasts, why shouldn't we? Amen? He says, put on oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees you what is done in secret will reward you. I'm going to be preaching on these, these things, okay? When you go to Matthew chapter 6, starting from chapter, verse 1 all the way to 18, it, said, it talks about three things as believers that God calls us to. He says, when you give, when you pray, and when you fast. There's three things there, all right? That we as believers, that God automatically assumed that we would do. When we give, when we pray, and when we fast, all right? But I'm going to be focused today on fasting. So that's number one. We fast because Jesus fasted. You know, he assumed that we would fast, that we would do just as, as he told us to. Number two, to humble ourselves. To humble ourselves. The flesh is selfish and it wants its way. You see, when you, when you never fast, then you give your flesh everything that it wants. The flesh is like a new more baby. All right? It's going to cry. It doesn't care if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. How many of you got up and fed that little baby stomach at 3 o'clock in the morning, went to the refrigerator, and got that Blue Bell ice cream and opened it up? Come on, somebody. Your stomach will wake you up in the middle of the night. You know, you could be driving. You can almost have a wreck because you needed to exit just to catch that restaurant. Come on, somebody. <laughs> the flesh is selfish. The Bible says here, I'm just going to read these scriptures off to you. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18.4. 18, 18, 4. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter 5 and 6. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. How many of you know that when you humble yourself, God will raise you up? You don't have to strive. You don't have to continue to do this and to do that. God will raise you up. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Fasting, when you fast, you're humbling yourself. You're not giving in to every single thing that is calling your attention to it. You know, 
And, and I want you to get that. You know, David said, I humbled myself with fasting. Psalms 35, 13. You know, I'm going to tell you this because, I, I mean, I know that you, many of you heard it, that, you know, you get breakthrough when you fast, right? How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that you get breakthrough when you fast? You know, so many of you, your breakthrough is just in humbling yourself. Pride won't let you humble yourself. Wants won't let you humble yourself. And I'm going to tell you what your breakthrough is. Your breakthrough is that God is trying to break through you. <laughs> He's trying to get through you. Everything that, that, we, that we just over clutter our minds with. You know, because, you know, God just wants you to just, just hear from him. And we sometimes, even when you close your mouth, how many of you know it's still loud in your mind? You can close your mouth, you can close your mouth, but your mind can still keep going. That's why you need to fast. The Bible says that, that we should give our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. How do you quiet your mind? Some of you, some of you here can't even sleep at night because your mind won't let you. Your body's tired, but your mind won't go to sleep. I encourage you, get this word. Your breakthrough is in humbling yourself. Your breakthrough is that God is trying to break through you. It's your thick skull, your, it's pride, it's rebellion, 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 doing it your way. Humble yourself today with fasting. How many of you say, I could just take that word, I'm going to fast. Amen? Amen. You know, if you have a hard time just, you know, always having your way, that's the flesh. When you see a, a contentious person, when you see a person that always has to have the last word, when you see a person that is argumentative, when you see a person that just always has uh, this, that, that wants to fight, when you see a person like that, that's a person full of the flesh. They haven't learned to humble themselves in fasting. They haven't learned to, to subdue the flesh under the spirit. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. I'm telling you what. I can't wait to get out of here so I can go eat. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. I'm going to go eat. All right. All right. I'm, I'm almost done. Not. Number three. Number three. The reasons why we fast is for unity. It's for unity, church. You know, I fast individually and I fast corporately but they're both for unity. When I fast by myself, I desire to be in unity with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I desire to yoke up with their thoughts. I don't, I don't want to yoke up with my own thoughts. I want to yoke up with his thoughts. I'm telling you, going into 2018, change the way that you do things. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a challenge to get closer to God, to run after God more. I'm, I'm telling you to get out of your own mind and get out of yourself and get into Christ. Get into Christ. When we fast as a church corporately, we all come in agreement with the Spirit of God. I can say one thing, and, and Pastor Jaime or, or Jamie, we all, the, word, the Lord confirms his word. Let me ask you something. If there's a lot of disunity in your home, men of God, fast. Learn to fast. And, and, and when your wife and your children see you fast, when they see you getting serious about the things of God, it's not hard for a woman to submit a man, to submit under a man that's submitted to Christ. All the women said, Amen. Amen. I, amen to that, Pastor. You got that one going. I don't mind submitting to him if he just submit to Jesus. But if he ain't submitting to Jesus, I don't know what he's submitted to. So I ain't submitting to anything. He's going to have to submit to, to Christ. Amen. He may be submitted to NFL for all I know. I ain't submitting to that. Amen. If your wife don't know what you submitted to, you're in trouble already. We need unity, church. We need unity. Throughout the Word of God, 
Every time the children of Israel went through something big, whether if they were going to be annihilated by Nebuchadnezzar, whether if they were going to be annihilated by Haman, whether they, were, they needed materials to build the temple, every single time they said, call a fast. Call a fast, get everybody to fast. When, when Esther was there and she told her uncle Mordecai, she goes, I got to go before the king, and, and, and if I perish, I perish. So for the next three days, tell, tell everybody to fast. Even the, the donkeys... Get everybody. Don't 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 feed little Lily and Mimi, and don't feed don't feed your little Yorkie. Everybody fasting. Don't don't feed Jake or Rocky. None of them. We all fasting together. That's what they did. They fasted, church. They fasted. You know, I tell you this: that if we're looking at doing extraordinary things in 2018, we're going to learn how to how to fast together. We're going to learn how to be in one accord. We're going to have to learn to be in unity. All right? You know, if, if, if somebody around you is not, you know, not taking it serious and they're just, they're just eating like, you know, it's Thanksgiving, go on, let them eat. Just say, man, I, I'm, I'm going to holler at you later. You know? But, but I'm serious, church. I'm serious. It, it just, just imagine, just imagine that if every morning, and, and you don't have to be here at the church, but if every morning, every one of us were praying to God at the same time, if every one of us was denying ourselves our appetite, and we gave that up to seek Him at the same time, what do you think that God would do here in this place? I mean, think about it for a moment. Think about it. What would God do in your own home if you and your wife and, and, and your three children, if, if, if everybody was fast and everybody got up in the morning every morning and then they just said, Lord, we just want to we just want to honor you today. We want to give you our first fruits today, Lord. We just want to, we don't, we don't want anything. We just want you, Lord. What do you think God would do in your family? Do you think that you'll continue to struggle week after week? I don't think so. I don't think so. When I read the Word of God and when I, when I see the people and the children of Israel, man, they change, they, they change God's mind. Look at, look at Nineveh. The, the Lord sent Jonah. He sent Jonah over there to tell them, hey, it's over. It's it. It's gone. Y'all are dead. Y'all have sinned too much. Y'all, you know, and, and what happened? That king, they, 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 they ripped, he ripped his clothes. They, they prayed and they fasted and they repented. And what happened? He had to send Jonah back. Tell him, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right, son. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. You're, you're, you're good. I'm not going to kill you after all. King Hezekiah, they send the prophet. They send the prophet and they said, uh, the prophet said, hey, the Lord says, um, get your house in order because you're going to die. <laughs> you know, his story is recorded three times in the Bible. The same story. It says, Get your house in order, uh, you're going to die. You know, Hezekiah was, oh, my, he, oh, Lord. He started, the Bible said he cried out with a loud voice. And the Bible says that the prophet, he wasn't even that far away, but he, God told the prophet, go back. And guess what he told Hezekiah? He says, I've heard your prayers, I've seen your tears, and I'm going to add to you 15 more years. Amen? Let me tell you something. When you pray and you fast, it moves the hand of God. It moves the hand of God. You don't have to force the hand of God. You don't have to get mad. It just, it just, it does. It just does. Amen? The proof is in the pudding. Amen? The proof is in the word of God. The proof is here. In 2018, I'm going to tell you something. If we're going to see that building come to pass, come on, somebody. If we're going to see that building come to pass, let me tell you something. It was effortlessly. All he had to do was humble himself. Say, Lord, forgive me. Say, and, just, and just give himself over to God. And God did it. It's not, they didn't have 15 fundraisers. Come on, somebody. Amen? I'm telling you, church, it's, 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 it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. Let, let me go to number four. Number four. To remove unbelief and to build your faith. To remove unbelief and to build your faith. So there was these disciples 
And there was a man that had a son that he was an epileptic. And they brought this young man to the disciples. And he was foaming at the mouth, throwing himself on the floor. And they said, you know, that he, they were trying to cast these demons out and they just couldn't. And finally the man brings him to Jesus. And he says, uh, Lord Jesus, have mercy on my son. I brought my son uh, to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. And then he said, where is he? And, and he came, they brought him before Jesus, and he falls on the floor and he starts foaming at the mouth. You know, he starts, you know, reacting and doing all this. This is what Jesus tells him in Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. He says, because of your, because the disciples asked him after he left, they're like, how come we couldn't do it, Lord? How come we couldn't do it? That's what they did. And then this is what the Lord told them. Because of your unbelief. For surely I say to you, if you have faith as much as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible to you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. I'm telling you, there's some mountains in your life. And there's other things that you prayed for, and, and you've, you've been able to shake those. But there's some things in your life and they're like a mountain planted right there. And you don't see how you can ever change that. This one is different. It's different. And if you want to move those mountains, how do you build your faith? You start believing more of God and less of the world. You start believing more of, of what's on the inside than by what you see. You stop trusting more in your senses and try to start trusting more in the spirit. Amen? I, mean, I feel like this is a little too spiritual for some of y'all. You all right out there? You all right? I just, I just want to know. I mean, because I mean, you, you're getting fed spiritually today. You're getting fed spiritually today because you're fasting, right? I'm not going to give you, I'm not giving you carnal stuff. I'm giving you spiritual stuff. I want to feed you good things. I want you to understand the things of God. Amen? I want you to be... I want you to hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. I'm not trying to talk to you and, and, and you know, bring all of these other, you know, ops that we usually sometimes bring. But I want you to hear what the Spirit wants to speak to you. I mean, the Spirit, I mean, this, this word that God has given me, He's given me in, in 2018 is, is the word grow. You know, God, God wants you to grow in 2018. He wants you to grow up. He doesn't want you to stay in, in the same you know, uh, um, immature place that you've always been. He doesn't want you to settle for all of the things that you once settled for. He doesn't want you to just come and warm up a pew. He doesn't want you to just come and, and have, do your little routine and go home. He wants you to grow in the knowledge thereof. He wants you to develop your gifts. He wants you to develop those gifts. And how, how do you, how do you, understand those things that God is trying to tell you if you never take the time to focus and understand what God wants you to do. You know, Sister Chastity brought a word last Wednesday and she used this word complacent. You know, and she gave the definition of complacency. Complacency is getting accustomed to your surroundings, and not really wanting to do anything more than that. And so many Christians, so many believers have become complacent with their life. I know the Lord. I know Jesus. I go to church. Boom. That's it. That's it. I'm going to heaven. Boom. But what happens when a loved one gets sick? What happens when you're going through something in your marriage? How do you stand when something, when, when something goes wrong with one of your children? How do you stand? Do you, are your spiritual legs strong enough to hold you up? Or do you run back to the world? I'm, I'm telling you today, if you get this, church, if you get this, praise the Lord. Number five, we, we fast for complete deliverance. For complete deliverance. We need to remove habitual sins in our life. We need to remove bad tempers. We need to remove bad habits, hindrances in our life. Hebrews 12, 1, it says, lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily ensnares us or entangles us. All those things that have been entangling you all the time. It's like you're, you, you may be doing good for a while and then you hit this spider web. 
And you get tangled up all over again. And you ask yourself, how did I get here again? How did I end up with a guy with the same attitude as the last one? Come on, somebody. How, how, how did I end up? <laughs> how did I end up in this place? Why do I always attract these type of people? You know, the Bible says in the book of James about the tongue. You know, the tongue is very small, but it can cause great damage. The tongue is like the rudder of a ship, and it just moves, and it moves that big old ship. It's like a little fire in the forest, you know. I believe some of you today, I'm just speaking, I'm going to speak to you through the Spirit. I believe some of you today need to go on a Joshua fast. You know what a Joshua fast is? You see, how hard do you think it was when the word of the Lord came to Joshua and he told Joshua, you're going to take Jericho, but the way you're going to take it is by marching around there seven times, but you're not going to say a word until I tell you to say it. Some of you need to go on a shut your mouth fast. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, they weren't supposed to say nothing. Can you imagine they were, you know, they couldn't even say, hey. Seven days, six, seven days, they had to walk around that whole wall. They went on a, they went to shut your mouth fast. You shout when I tell you to shout. You speak when I tell you to speak. You, you say what I want you to say. That's what the Lord's going to tell you. Some of you think you always got to have the last word, and that's why you keep getting into the place where you're always at. Come on, come on, somebody. I'm doing some marriage counseling right now. Come on. I'm doing marriage counseling right now. Some of you need to go on a Joshua fast real quick. You know, you just get, every time they say something that gets on your nerve, you just. <laughs> the Lord said don't say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Man, I'm telling you what. Joshua, Joshua had a strong fast. Some people didn't think Joshua had a hard time. Joshua had a hard time. He probably told them back, if you say something, we're going to strike you down. <laughs> they were just like, burp, burp. They, you know, they just had the horn. But I'm telling you today, <laughs> God wants complete deliverance on your life. Every habitual sin. Every word that comes out. And, and this is the thing, you know, because God wants us, you know, God wants us to use our words to build up, not tear down. Amen? What does the word of God say? Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to edify, that it may minister grace to the hearer. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. God doesn't want us, God wants us to build up, not gossiping about our brothers and sisters. God wants us to encourage, not get the last word. God wants us to speak peace, not, not cynicism, not, not sarcasm, not, not sarcastic, don't be sarcastic. Amen. Come on, amen. Somebody got it. Amen. Amen. Because the devil works through sarcasm. What did they mean by that? Why do you got to say it like that? I mean, you know, I'm telling you, go, go on that. Go on the Joshua fast. Some of you, I mean, you know, do some food, but do, do, do the Joshua fast. You know? And, you know, when people say something, just learn hand, sign, hand, sign language. They, you know, they, they know the sign. You ain't got to say a word. Leave me alone. Amen? But guess what happened? Guess what happened? Because they learned to close their mouth, the walls fell. The wall's up because you talk too much. Come on, somebody. 
They're like, oh, man, here we go again. Here we go again. And they put the wall up. They put the wall up. I used to, me and, I'm, let me just lay myself on the grill. Look, my son, like, oh, my God, here he goes. No, but I, you know, I was the type of person that I always had to, when, when we got in a little scuff, little argument, you know, it, it was like, we got to talk about this. And she, she didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to talk about it. But I said, no, we got to talk about this because we can't just, we, we can't just go on and like, and boom, the wall would go up. And I could say a thousand words and all of them will fall to the ground because she ain't picked one of them up. <laughs> amen. Come on, don't shut me down now. Thank you, Jose, for that one amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The walls of Jericho, you're going to have to tear that walls of Jericho down in your life. Amen. If you want people to receive what you got to say, you're going to have to learn to, to walk in peace. And how do you get there? The Bible says you, no one can tame the tongue. Only through the Spirit of God you can. Only through the Spirit of God you can tame your tongue. I bit it too many times. I wanted to have a tongue left, so I just, I just learned to tame it instead of biting it. Come on, somebody. Amen? God wants complete deliverance. How many of you just want to get rid of that bad temper? Amen? About four of you. The rest of them want to stay mad. Come on, somebody. <laughs> the rest of them, no, I just stay mad. I'm just, I like it. <laughs> I, like, I like being mad all the time. Bad habits, you know, bad habits, hindrances in your life. You know, some of you need to just go on and, and, and cut the umbilical cord of some people that are attached to you, that bring you down every single time that you try to do something good for the Lord. And, and you, you don't, you know, you don't have the ability to just say, man, you know what, brother, I'm, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving. Like Zacchaeus, we were le learning in the men's class, you know, Zacchaeus was on a tree. When Jesus came, he went to another tree. It's time for you to jump to another tree. You know, stop hanging around uh, people that are hindrances. That's, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1, the, 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 the snares and the hindrances that so easily entangle you, they pull you back. There's people in your life that, that you don't want to let go because you don't want to hurt their feelings. But they're keeping you from your full potential in Christ. They're keeping you from being all that God wants you to be. They won't let you tap into the supernatural because their mind is carnal and they're always bringing up the natural with doubt and unbelief. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's going to cost too much money. What? Are you crazy? You, got, you can't go over there. You go to church too much. You're going to church on New Year's Eve? Come on now. You're getting a little over overzealous there, buddy. Man. You ain't dead yet, brother. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Amen? I was dead, and now I'm alive. And that's one of the things, church. And, and you know, I, I say it in love. You don't have to just be mean about it. You can say, brother, pardon peace. Wish you well. God bless you. But if you want to reach, I mean, look, when you, when you get into that place of fasting, God will reveal those things. He'll reveal those things. Because sometimes we, we, we babysit people too much. You know, they, they come and, man, they, they didn't smoke three joints. And you just, oh, I'm sorry, I know the Lord's going to forgive me, right? You know, and they go drink and they come all. Oh, Lord, I know God will forgive me. I mean, over and over and over to you just like, hey, man, you know, don't play with God like that. God is real. He loves you. And you ain't doing nothing but being a bad example when you tell people you're a believer. And, and you go, I mean, you got to be real with people. You're going to be honest. You've got to give them the truth. The truth will set them free. Not pampering them. Not changing their diaper. Not burping them. Come on, look, man. Pastor's a little, he's going off today. Listen, I want you to grow. And look, when, when people get around you, when people get around you, that life should illuminate from you. All right? The words that you speak, they are life because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, right? And, and he says, the, the words that I give you, they are peace. They are life. Amen? So life should be coming out of you, not lies. There's a difference. Life, not lies. What do you think? Should I do this? Well, they stabbed you in the back three times. Uh, should I forgive them? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You just set them up for the okie doke 
again and again and again. If you love that person, give them the truth. Do you give your children the truth? Do you give your children the truth? If they come in and smell like alcohol, you're like, oh, it's just, I was, I was drinking some water. I was drinking a lot of Coke. Man, I, go to the room. <laughs> to go to the room. I'm going to go wash you with some Coke, you know. But, I mean, you know, you, you, if you love somebody, you give them the truth. Amen? Complete deliverance. Do the Joshua fast. Keep your mouth shut until God says to open it. All right? That, that's in love, brother, sisters. Number six. This is awesome. You know, we fast and we pray to attract his presence. Now, you know, don't misunderstand it, okay? Don't misunderstand it. We don't fast and we pray for the blessing. You can't earn the blessing. But we, we fast and we pray because we desire to be in God's presence. We desire it. I want to bring to your remembrance um, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, there was a prophet named Eli. Okay, Eli was a, a prophet. He had two sons, Hophnius and Phinehas. And these boys, they were doing things dishonorable in, in the house of God. They were going there and they were sleeping with some of the women. They were like going to church and sleeping with some of the women. They were taking some of the offering that belonged to the Lord. They were not, not representing, not honoring God in his house. And the Lord had brought it time and time again to Eli, but Eli never did anything about it. He never did nothing about it. He just said, hey, little boys, that's not right. That's not right. And then he went on. And the Bible says that the Lord just got tired of it, and he confronted Eli. He confronted Eli in 1 Samuel, and um, when he confronted Eli, he told them. He told Eli, he said, listen. I know I said that, that, that my presence would, would be with you. I know that, that I said this. But because you have honored your sons more than you've honored me, I've torn the kingdom away from you, and you will no longer be my prophet. I'm going to raise somebody else up to be my prophet. You see, and the reason why I say this is because Eli wasn't a prophet that fasted. He never fasted. The Bible says that he was a very, very large man. He was in his 90s. And he didn't take the things of God serious. He didn't honor God. And the Bible says that when the Lord gave him that word, he said, listen, this is the sign I'm telling you. Both of your sons are going to die in battle. And the, and the ark is going to be captured. And he waited for that day. There was a battle. Both of his sons died. They brought the ark of the covenant. It got captured by the Philistines. And he came back. One of the guys told him. When they told him, he, he just fell over. And because he was a big guy, he fell on his neck, broke his neck, and he died. This is the thing. Phineas' wife, she gave birth when she heard the news. And when she gave birth, she had a son, and they named him Inkabod. Inkabod means the presence has departed. And so many of us have been living life, a Christian life, that way. You live, you come to church, but the presence, there's no presence. There's no presence in your life. You, you'd come, you do works, you, you, you laugh, you cheer, but there's no presence, there's no power, there's no, there, there, there's no results in your life. Because we're living that, going through the motions, that day-to-day, -day, that, that routine. And God desired for his presence to be there. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. Listen to what Samuel said. When Samuel took over, this is, this is 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 6. And when they had assembled in Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And on that day they fasted, and there they confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. Now Samuel was serving as the leader of Israel in Mizpah. God find him. God found him a prophet that would pray and that would fast. If you're praying for your family, if you want your family back, pray and fast. If you're believing for your marriages, lady, pray and fast. If you want that son or that daughter to come back home, pray and fast. Let the presence come back into your family. Let the presence come back into the ministry. Let that presence, that's why we pray and fast, because we want that presence. We want to honor that presence. 
We're saying, Lord, we need you. We need you in this place. We want you in this place. We can't do this on our own. We can't do this on our own. We need more of you. And when we get to that place, let me tell you something. I'm getting you ready for 2018, church. I'm getting you ready for 2018 what to go after. This is what you go after in 2018. Don't settle for the things that you've, you've, you've went through in 2017. If you want more of God, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. This is where it's at, church. Far be it from me to say the presence has departed. Far be it from me. Amen? Amen. Number seven, we pray and fast for direction. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21, uh, let me just tell you about Ezra. Ezra was a prophet and they were in Babylon, they were in captivity. And man, he got all this favor. You know, he was a great prophet. He had all this favor and, and, and King Xerxes II gave him gold and gave him silver. He, he says, I'm giving you all of this stuff to go back and build your temple for your God. He had favor. He had all these people. But, but Ezra had one problem. Ezra had one problem because he had talked about how good God was. And he, he, he said how, how God was going to protect them. And, but from where he was to where he needed to go, there was a lot of robbers and there was a lot of thieves. There was a lot of bandits. And he was saying, if we go over here with all this gold and silver, they're going to rob us. But he didn't want to tell the king because he was afraid the king was going to say, no, okay, you had a good God that loved you and that he protected you. Where's your faith at? You don't really believe in what you're telling me. So instead of taking it to the king, Israel said, let's pray. Let's fast. When they had a symbol, excuse me, 1 Samuel 7, I mean, I'm sorry, Ezra 8.21, there by the Ahava Canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves. There we go again. Humble ourselves. That's what fasting is. Humble ourselves before our God and ask Him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. So God has a route for you. He has a destination for you. He, he, he knows which way to send you. And so many times we make so many mistakes. We end up going down roads. We exhaust all of our time. And we end up in a dead end. We end up in a dead end. Or a ditch. That's right. Ezra 9.8. But now, for a brief moment, the Lord God has been gracious in leaving us a remnant and giving us a firm place in his sanctuary. And so our God gives light to our eyes and a little relief in our bondage. You know what Ezra was telling them? He, he, he said later in that scripture, he said, Lord, thank you for giving us just a portion of revival. They were fasting. They were praying. He said, Lord, thank you for giving us that portion of revival in our lives. Let me tell you something. Just like they were going and they were afraid of thieves, I want you to know that we have a thief too. In John 10, 10, the Bible says the thief comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And every time that you're going on your way and you're doing your thing for God, don't think that the enemy just sits back and says, oh, I'm going to leave him alone right now. He's fasting. He doesn't do that. You know, over here in Samuel, when, when they got the, 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 the ark back, when the presence came back and, and, and they were fasting, the Bible says the Philistines heard they were fasting and then they went and attacked them. How many of you know that when you begin to fast and when you begin to pray, the enemy comes and attacks you? I'm not telling you that everything is going to be fine. I'm not telling you that everything is, when you start fasting, you're going to be this spiritual giant. Your stomach's going to growl at you. Your mind's going to talk to you. You're going to hear voices. All right? Your body might twitch at night. Like, get up. Get up. I'm telling you, these things happen when you fast. If fasting was easy, you wouldn't have a problem getting volunteers. But I'm telling you today, if you need direction, fast the way that Ezra did. Pray and fast for direction. You know... Many of you, some of you are going to buy a house in 2018. How many of you receive it? If you're gonna, how many of you are going to buy a house in 2018? How many of you are going to buy land in 2018? How many of you want God to release the increase in your life so that you can get the things that you know that, that, that you've been praying for and been believing for? I mean, you know, 
We got to get serious, church. We got to get serious. And say, Lord, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. And I know what you have in store for me. We're fasting. We're praying. We're believing. We've, we're, we're obtaining that property, that building that God has for us. We're obtaining it. I'm, obtain, I'm, a, I'm obtaining a house for my, for my family in the natural. I'm obtaining it by, by faith. I, I'm, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk in the steps that God has me to walk in. I'm going to do what he's called me to do. And, and, and I tell you what. You won't get discouraged. See, that's, that's a lot of times where people get burned out. You get burned out, you get discouraged because you're not praying, because you're not fasting. Burnout comes when we don't cultivate a relationship with the Spirit of God. Amen? How many of you are receiving something here? How many of you are ready to go eat? How many of you are ready to go eat? Well, I've got a few of them over there. Man, all this talk about fasting is making me hungry. Well, the devil starts early, don't he? Come on now. So this brings me to my last one. I know your stomach's growling. Number eight, we fast for dreams, visions, visitations, and interpretations. And one of the, I mean, for me, one of the greatest prophets that I read about is, is Daniel. And... Um, Daniel had been praying. He had been fasting. And uh, I'm going to read Daniel chapter 10, verse 2. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. How long is three weeks? 21 days. And I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until three weeks were over. Now, this is crazy because he fasted for three weeks and nothing happened. But he said, on the 24th day, something happened, all right? An angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel, and he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I'm preaching the Bible to you guys. I'm not giving you my opinion. If, how many of you say, I believe in the Bible? I believe in the Word of God. Okay? The Bible says that when we pray and when we fast, God hears our words. The moment you pray, He hears you. So if, if, he's, if you have a direct line for God to hear what you have to say, why wouldn't we pray? Why wouldn't we fast? Why would we just, just not talk to God? I mean, I'm telling you today, church, Daniel had some awesome visions. He had some awesome visitations. He was able to interpret dreams. You know, they were going to kill him and all of his homies at one time. They were going to kill everybody. And they said, Daniel didn't even know what was going on. He said, what's going on? He said, well, the king had a dream, and nobody can interpret it, so everybody's going to die. And he's like, man, hold up. I got, I, got a, I got somebody that can interpret your dream. Give me some time. He went, he interpreted the dream, and he told the king the dream. And he not only saved his life, but he saved everybody else's life. How many of you know that when you pray and fast, you're not just doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for your family, you're doing it for your friends, you're doing it for your city, and you're doing it for your nation. I, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, and it just broke my heart. It broke my heart. I was thinking about how many of us, and this is just an art you know, church, but I'm sure there's a lot of faithful men and women all over the place. I was thinking about my life, thinking about, I was thinking about your, your family, I mean, I was thinking, how many of y'all seen Pastor Jaime, he's out there evangelizing, he's always witnessing to people, you know, how sad would it be for his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren to be lost, not serving God, and be in rebellion? You know, if, if you can't fast for yourself, at least fast for your children and your grandchildren. And fast for your relatives. Fast for those that, that are not saved. I got brothers that I want to be saved. I want brothers that I want to be walking in the kingdom. I want to see my brothers and sisters in heaven. I want to see my nieces and nephews. I got some of them that are out there. Can any of you bear witness with me today? Do you got anybody that's out there that you, that you pray for, that you hope that one day you don't get a call to say, they found them dead. They're out there like that. I don't just fast for myself so I can be this great spiritual giant. I fast because I love people. 
I love my, my family. I want to see them saved. I want to see them healed. I want to see them delivered. I want to see you in this church. I want to see you grow in the knowledge and the things of God. I don't want you to have to be like a, like a spiritual baby, always needing a bottle, always needing a, for somebody to pray for you. I want you to be that spiritual giant to where people come to you and say, Brother, pray for me. Brother, I need healing. Teach me. I want you to be disciples, to disciple others. That's what I desire for your life. I'm praying for you. I'm fasting for you too. And I pray that you would fast and pray for your pastors. I pray that you would fast and pray for us. Because we need it. We need it. How are we ever going to see the supernatural take place in this, in this ministry if we don't fast and pray? If we don't go after all that God has for us? I'm telling you, church, you know, my desire is to see, is to see the power and the presence. We've seen it in a lot of families already, but, but at, a, at a, I believe at a small measure, not at the measure that, that Daniel saw it. You're like, Daniel? You, yes, the way Daniel saw it. The way John the Baptist saw it. The way Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus said, greater work shall you do. Greater, greater, greater work shall you do. He said, don't marvel, don't marvel at what you see me do, because when I leave, I says, I got to leave so I can send the Spirit of God to you so you can do greater works. But if we never take the time and just tap in, we think that we're going to get the spiritual high by turning TV in and looking at a great preacher. If that's all God wanted, then, then we would have just all been in one big old place. God wants you to grow up. God wants you to preach. God wants you to teach. God wants you to lay hands on the sick. God wants you to raise the dead. That's what he wants. I'm talking, to, I'm talking about supernatural stuff here. I'm talking about dreams and visions and visitation. I'm talking about interpretations. How many of you have come before and you say, I have a dream, but I don't know what it means? And I'm going to tell you, some of you had some powerful, powerful dreams. Amen. I was talking to one of the brothers. He said he had a dream that Jesus came to him, but he was speaking in a tongue. That he didn't understand. And God wants, what is it God? God, is, God can speak English, people. <laughs> the reason why he was speaking in another tongue is because he wants us to learn something. Don't shut me down while I'm preaching good. Amen. I got shot down a few times. But this is the thing. When he told Daniel, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I came in response to them. But the prince of Persia, kingdom, uh, the, the, the kingdom of Persia resisted me 21 days. Listen to that. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So he says, he, this prince of Persia came and resisted him 21 days. How long was he fasting? The breakthrough came at 24 days. When you fast and you don't see what, you, what you've been praying for, don't give up. Don't be discouraged and don't yoke up with unbelief. David, when his son was about to die, he fasted. He fasted and, and, and after his son died, he went to go eat. And they didn't understand. They said, we didn't understand why your son was here alive. You fasted, but he died. You went to eat. And he says, yeah, I fasted and believed that I thought, he says, I thought perhaps the Lord May have mercy and let him live. But he didn't. But it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go on about, I'm going to eat. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Just because he didn't get it, he, he didn't dishonor God. He went on believing God. God knows. God knows what he's, do, what he's doing. Amen? And, you know, I just, I just want to encourage you today. I, wanna, I just want to leave you with this because this really blessed me. You know, I heard Pastor Jensen Franklin talk about this, and I had to look it up for myself, but, you know, I, I, I encourage you to pray for our nation. Pray for the United States of America. You know, I, I was hearing him, he, was, he said a little thing about uh, Abraham Lincoln, and you know, Abraham Lincoln called four fast in our nation. The United States, that was when the time of the Civil War, that before, during, and even after the Civil War took place, Abraham Lincoln 
He proclaimed a fast to the people of the United States. And the year following, the years following that, I mean, the, the, the United States of America was ravished by civil war. It was desolated. There was, brother, there was a, so many people that died in the civil war. But when, he, you know, he was a prayerful man. He, met, he was a man that believed in fasting, you know, and, and so many things began to break loose after the 1860s. I mean, the United States became a superpower. How does that happen? There's no logical explanation. Uh, they said in 19, I believe 1967, that the Russian government ended up selling Alaska to the United States um, for how many, I think like for 17 million, which, which estimated two cents an acre. Today it's worth 200 billion. It's got one of the, you know, the richest oil reserves that go through Alaska. You know, there was, uh, back, in the, back in the 1900s, it, it, they found gold there. I mean, you know, so many things happened during those times but, you know, he, you know, I just want to read a little bit of it. The Senate of the United States devoutly recognized the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God. In all the affairs of men of the nation has by a resolution requested the president to designate and set apart a day of national prayer and humiliation. Humility. We need to humble ourselves before Almighty God, you know. Whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the, the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions and humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, we need to start praying for President Trump, that he starts fasting and that he starts praying. Come on, somebody. Amen. I think this side cares more about the president than this side. Everybody's like, yeah, whatever. I don't dare. No, he ain't going to make it. <laughs> we got to pray for our president. We got to pray for our president. Yeah, look, look, all this side's clapping. Look, two people over there. We got to pray for our president. <laughs> They're like, no, give, me my, give, give me my green card back and I will. Look. Yeah, give, me a, give me my card. I'll, I'll pray. Give me my card. But he, I need to pray that he gives us a card back. Come on, somebody. The Lord will make it right. Come on, somebody. The Lord will make it right. I said, the, who's your source, Trump or Jesus? Jesus? All right. If that's your source, then you ain't got to worry about nothing. You're right where God wants you to be. If the Lord don't want you to go back, you ain't going back. Amen. Come on, somebody, don't shut boy. I'm telling you what, it's time to get excited. Come on and stand to your feet with me. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, church, I want to just, again, personally invite you out tonight. We're going to begin tonight at 9 o'clock p.m. We're going to have DJ Mingo in the house. Amen. If you got your singing voice, we're going to have some karaoke in the back. We're going to have some games. We're going to have some Bible trivia. And then at, at 11 o'clock, we're going to begin in worship. And we're going to bring in the new year worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords so uh if you haven't signed up to bring something where, where are my sisters at that are taking care of that melissa where's my oh you're not a sister you're a brother you just got long hair brother <laughs> okay you can get with pastor carmen if you want to bring something uh we, we got i know there's a lot of food already being brought but we're going to be here we're going to fellowship amen i know it's supposed to get cold tonight all right, I know it's supposed to get cold tonight, so, you know, bring the attire that you need to stay warm. But um, I want to tell you that I love you. I really do. I love you with all my heart. You know, I I'm, I'm really am excited. I know that this is not a message that, that I probably won't get a lot of likes and a lot of views on YouTube. But it's all right because I care about you. I care about you, and I want you to grow in the knowledge thereof. I want you to grow in Christ. I want you to grow in the Spirit. I want you to have that foundation in your life that wherever you go, wherever you may be, that you know how to tap in. You know what it, you know what it takes to, to hear from God, to see God, to listen unto God. And we're, we're going to have some powerful meetings th these next few weeks because we're going to be fasting and we're going to be praying, be expecting. And, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm going I'm to just speak a word of faith. 
If you've got loved ones that are sick, bring them. We're not afraid to pray for them. Amen? We're not, we're not the source of their healing. God is the source of their healing. But we believe it. We believe that God will heal, will heal people. Amen? We believe that He loves us so much. He loves us so much that, that He will. He will grant it. You just got to have a, you got to have that humility. You got to have that childlike faith. Amen? With every head bowed and every eye closed, Father God, I just thank you today, Lord. I thank you for this, for this last day, Lord. I thank you for the, your glory. I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for your power, Lord. I thank you for your anointing, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for every man and woman and child. I thank you for every family represented here today, Lord. Father, we honor you tonight, to, uh, this morning. We honor you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for the word that came forth today, Lord. And Father, we pray, Father. We pray and believe that your plan for us is good and not evil. And we pray and believe, Father, that you give us the strength and the ability to do all the things that you've called us to do, Lord. And Father, we just honor you today. And I pray right now for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their Lord, as their Savior, if there's someone here today that may be going through the motions or maybe they, they don't feel your presence or they, they don't hear your voice and, and they just want more of you today, Lord. I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will move on their behalf. If that's you here today and, and you said that describes you and I, I want more of God. I don't want to go through the same routines that I did last year. I want, I want to have a relationship with Him. I want to know Him. If that's you here today, just put one hand on your heart. And one hand towards heaven and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I repent. I turn my back on all those things I did wrong. I turn my back on all those sinful nature things. And Father God, I accept you into my heart. Holy Spirit, Fill me. Have your way in me. And lead me into all truth. Father God, I give you my heart, my soul, and my mind. In Jesus' mighty, precious name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Listen, church. We never like to end, really, you know, without leading you in that prayer. But this is the moment of truth. This is a new year. It's time to stop being ashamed. It's time to stop being ashamed. It's, it's, it's time for us to stop hiding in the closets. It's time for us to just get out and be, and be open about what we believe. If you keep hiding your faith in public, then you'll never grow in secret. You got to get bold, amen? If you said that prayer today and you believed it with all your heart and you desire to, to, to just grow, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you anymore. You're not going to be ashamed. If you said that prayer and meant it with all your heart and you're not ashamed, just come forward. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give them a hand. Anybody, just come on forward. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a new day, church. It's a new day. It's a new day. We're making a choice for 2018 to not live the same way we were used to living. Amen. Thank you, Father. Come on. Keep clapping, church. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. I know there's more out there. Amen. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, keep clapping louder. Louder. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is what it's all about, church. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is the last harvest. The last harvest for 2017. The last harvest. God is bringing in every, every soul. Every soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's a new beginning. New beginning. New beginning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to close in prayer, but I want y'all to stretch your hands out towards all these that have made a bold step of faith to come out. If I got some young men, some leaders, to just get around some of these young men here. Amen. Father God, I just thank you today, Lord. For today, I thank you for every young man and every young woman that has come forward, Lord. You know what they're dealing with, Lord. You know that all the things, Father, that they struggle with, Father, 
But I thank you that today, Father, those things come to an end. I thank you, Father, they're leaving that all behind and they're not looking back, but they're looking ahead, Lord. I thank you right now, Father. I pray right now your blessing, Father. I take authority. I take authority right now over every stronghold that would try to hold them captive in their minds. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I call them healed. I call them delivered. I call them set free. Father, we declare your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the days of their life. And they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, we thank you. I pray for the congregation. I pray that wherever they go tonight, Lord, that your shield of protection will surround them, Father. I pray ministering angels. I, 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 send, I, I give charge to ministering angels all around their vehicles, wherever they go. I thank you that signs and wonders will follow them. And I declare, Father God, that goodness and mercy will also go with them, Father. I pray that you bless them and bring them back either tonight or in 2018, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Happy New Year. God bless you.